Hi, I'm Isabel Thomas. I'm a science writer and a children's author and I'm super excited to be taking part in this year's Great Science Share for schools. I'm going to read you one of my books called Moth and Evolution Story with beautiful illustrations by Daniel Agnaeus. This is a story of light and dark, of change and adaptation, of survival and hope and it starts with a little moth. Look, what's that moving in the moonlight? A shiny cocoon wiggles and jiggles. Something is waking up from a long winter's sleep. Six little legs uncurl, two tiny antennae unfurl, and four salt and pepper wings stretch and quiver in the breeze. Watch out! Hungry predators are nearby. Oh. Quick, fly away. The peppered moth joins its sisters, brothers and cousins. Now most have speckled, freckled wings too. But sometimes a peppered moth is born with wings as dark as charcoal. The moths flitter and flutter, skitter and swoop and loop the loop all night long. They look for food and try not to get eaten themselves. Watch out for bats. As the sun rises, nighttime creatures must find a safe place to rest. Now, peppered moths like to doze on lichen covered branches. Be silent, be still. Someone else is looking for food now. Which moths are disguised? Which moths will survive? Oh no, charcoal black wings were easy to spot on the pale branches. These dark coloured moths will be a feast for hungry chicks. But the speckled freckled moths are masters of disguise. Their salt and pepper wings keep them safe from hungry eyes. The very next night they lay eggs of their own. The new moths will have salt and pepper wings too, just like their parents. Every year the same thing happens. Hundreds of tiny eggs hatch into gorgeous caterpillars like these. The moths are the best camouflage. It's live long enough to have children and pass on their salt and pepper wings. So this is why most peppered moths were speckled and freckled until the world began to change. People built factories and burned coal to power magnificent machines. They made steam trains to take things here, there and everywhere. Chimneys filled the air with smoke and soot. Pollution stained the clouds and blackened the branches where peppered moths rest. Be silent, be still. A bird is hunting for a snack. Now that their world is darker, which moths will survive? Which moths are disguised? Now the darkest moths are the masters of disguise. Their charcoal coloured wings keep them safe from hungry eyes. Now they live long enough to lay eggs of their own and pass on their wing colour to their children, grandchildren and great grandchildren. After 50 years, there are just as many peppered moths as there have ever been. But most are charcoal coloured now and speckled freckled moths are rare. They have adapted to the changes in their world. But next time you scramble through a forest, ramble near a hedgerow or run around a garden, be silent, be still. Look closely at the trees. You might spot a moth with wings as dark as charcoal or a moth with speckled freckled wings because their story didn't end when the world was a darker place. People decided to clean up the air. They burned less coal and found new ways to power machines. Year by year by year, cities grew greener, the air all around became cleaner and the trees shed their city bark. The speckled freckled moths are camouflaged once more and live long enough to pass on their salt and pepper wings to their children. So today, both types of moth find places to hide and survive. They are still telling their story of light and dark, of change and adaptation, of survival and hope. 
so that's my story moth um i hope you enjoyed it and i'm challenging you during the next week as you read and think about moth to come up with as many questions as you can now they might be questions about the world around you the insects you see in your garden or they might be questions about the things you saw in the book about peppered moths and how they adapted and how they responded to the changes caused by humans um, and if you collect all your questions together and send them via the great science share i'm super excited to get them and to try and answer some of them and if you visit my website um, you'll find lots of examples of the different ways that schools and children have used moth to create some amazing science and art and poetry work and you'll find instructions to do some exciting activities yourself things like making salt and pepper moths using real salt and pepper or perhaps a gravity defying moth that balances on your fingertip or if you're super talented on your nose and I even give you instructions to do some beautiful science writing of your own using your research about moths to make a science haiku or psyku and i'd love to see some of your psyches too and as a special treat i'll share some of my favorite moths with you that includes beautiful british moths like these which you can find in the uk and also moths you might find if you explore other places in the world such as this beautiful huge atlas moth so I look forward to seeing you there and to seeing all the questions that you come up with. Thank you so much for listening today. Bye.